Why'd you cut it, Jason? That was a hard cut. Hey, I'm not. I'm not running the show here. I'm not. I can't stand your hard fades. I know, dude. I gotta fix that. It actually only does it on this one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Rodeo Roundtable Thursday night. Always glad to be here and have fun. Um, in fact, I hate, maybe had a little too much fun before the show, but uh, why don't you share? Sorry, the, to... share it in here. You want to share the link? Won't all of us get in trouble? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's right. Let me um, let me disconnect, and then you can share it. Um, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. It's not. That's not happening. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> inside money plans. What's up, <laughs> gig work, Mama? How you doing? I'm good. Jason, gig economy how podcast. What's up? <laughs> I'm good. Ready to rock. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I want to build on a couple things. Maybe I was just trying to break the ice because this is these are like when I was just. I mean, I've got some articles too that we can go through, but when I was just spitballing these topics, this is like a whole week of like not good stuff. I mean, this is all pretty bad, and um, I want to build first. I want to build a little bit on what Kim was talking about on Tuesday because she was talking about, or should I let you kind of bring us up to speed with that? so that I can build on that a little um, bit. I talked a lot about a lot of stuff on Tuesday. I'm, I'm referring specifically to illegal accounts and um, your market, what you've seen, what you've noticed. Oh, um, there's a lot that I've seen. Um, my biggest, I was honestly on Tuesday night, I was just talking, I want to say real, um, yeah, and having were. a real conversation of what's been happening with DoorDash and also my area. And I said, I, you know, as a content creator, I feel like I take some of the blame um, and the stuff that we actually see um, and we actually do. So, you know, when my channel first started, like I, one of my top videos of all times is dashing in New Jersey. So, you know, I was very open to what I was doing, where I was going, and like fast forward to today, where do a lot of these illegal accounts and these groups, they go to YouTube, they go to Reddit, they go to Facebook groups and find the best areas to dash in and they're flooding markets. So I took a lot of blame um, because my, my, well, my old market now, because I said, because of this, and I had a very specific incident happen to me, which I can go into if you want the full story. But because of that, I now work in four other different zones. Like I've learned completely different areas that I don't tell anybody where I go. I don't tell anybody any of the restaurants. I now blur everything out. Like even when I do ride alongs or I do lives, like I put my camera down low or I put my camera so no one can see any like Re, like markable stuff that they would recognize um, just to protect me, first of all, as a content creator, because mm -hmm. um, I don't need um, negativity happening to me and people approaching me, which was happening. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, you know, my, my, my old market, I should say, just got completely out of control. And, you know, I'll take some of the blame for that. But it's, it's a lot of these illegal accounts. I mean, just, you know, a couple weeks ago, I decided to go back and just like, okay, it's raining outside. I don't want to really travel anywhere. And there were like 15 drivers standing around one car, just shooting the shooting the shit you know just waiting for their orders and it's it's uh, literally i have 50 to probably 100 just in like my five or six block radius of these drivers that have flooded my market and that's what it's come down to yeah on top on top of all that one thing that um i found actually pretty disturbing and i know this happens to other people i know this happened to pedro and other people and you bump into people and they recognize you from YouTube potentially. But I found it really scary that you had somebody that couldn't speak English at all come up to yeah. you 
and shove yeah. their phone in your face, kind of demanding through Google Translate that you tell them all the places you go. So clearly they found your channel. Mm -hmm. Clearly they had kind of blueprinted everything you've said. Now they're, they're demanding that you wear all these locations. Give me, give me all this information. They're doing it through Google Translate. Yeah, it, it, was the, it was through a translator app. The scary thing is um, in this, like, I was waiting in my normal, like, area. We all have our own spots that wait for, wait for orders. And I hear my car doors are locked. I always lock them. But I hear knocking on my window of my passenger door. And someone's, like, knocking on my window. And I'm like, who is this person knocking? At? So I, like, I put down the window just, like, like a little bit. I'm like, hello. He has my YouTube channel up and he's just like, and I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't even know what to do. So then he pulls out the translator app and like speaks and like starts asking me questions about, you know, where I sit and where I go and what restaurants he should sit at. And like, it became like, I, I'm like, I'm sorry. I can't like, I, I didn't want to be rude because kindness is always free. But at the same time, I'm like, no, dude, I'm not giving you all of my valuable information and how I make my money. Like it's, and he was, just, and now he's just one of the many drivers that are transcending in my market because they were looking for this information. I mean, there was one time I walked into just a pizza place and I knew, I know this pizza place and I walk in and like, hi, how are you? We're talking. And I, they're like, oh, it's going to be five more minutes. I step back. There's a driver right next to me and he is on his phone. He's texting and I look over and they, they said, she has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, it's like, it's, and I'm like, uh, I'm out. Like, I'm not even working in that area anymore because I know, like, I, if I was part of the pro, like, I'll admit, I was probably part of the problem with my videos and my ride alongs and being open and honest and, you know, kindness. So, I mean, I guess kindness get taken advantage of. And I mean, no more. That's it's just to me, it's just beyond scary. I mean, I've had my para hat on. I've had people comment, oh, you know, para. And I'm like, yeah, totally. I've had conversations with people, things that spar them or whatever. I can obviously recognize another fellow driver doing what I'm doing and have been able to always. But, um, but like me, I'm in a migrant city. Kim is very close to a migrant city that is so over overloaded. They're willing to drive an hour, two hours, three hours to get to markets that aren't as bad as New York City. Um, <clears throat> and so, I mean, I, I don't know. To me, this is this goes way beyond somebody recognizing you, and even having a conversation about you know, like, hey, I mean, like if somebody just ran into you and said, hey, you know, like I was caught your video, and I was curious about one thing and had a specific question. That's one thing, but like. For somebody to be like basically handing you pen and paper and say, draw your market out for me, damn it. I mean, that's kind of creepy even. Like, I got to yeah, say, like. Scary. it's But, you know, what I've learned is a lot of these drivers have no bounds, right? They're, they're determined, in, at least in my opinion, they're, and I'm never going to stop in anybody's way of making my money. We're all out here hustling. We're all out here to make money legally <laughs> i think that's the thing legally yeah but for like i learned my own way but like they're very determined like even walking into a restaurant they'll plow through drivers just to get to the front to get to the order to get out of the the restaurant so they can move on to the next order very determined people don't get me wrong so i don't think they honestly know any boundaries of what <laughs> social is socially is acceptable um yeah. but you know in my area you know it's new york drivers you know are transcending into my like it's all new york license plates it's all pennsylvania license plates like it's it's so many drivers from like out of states that it's it's something I've never seen before in my years of doing this. Yeah. I mean, I and then we all know this is happening. I live in a migrant city. I'm watching it happen, especially on the primary apps. I've seen things relating to taxes. People getting a little... Like, I've never used DoorDash. I've seen those articles popping up. I've never used DoorDash. Why was my... 
why was my social and my driver's license used this year? And why was there 15, $20,000 made on my account? I didn't never used it. No. So, I mean, if these people are starting to pop up, which we kind of should have figured, not everybody's selling their accounts. Some people are probably just get, having, you know, they had their data stolen and their fake accounts being created mm -hmm. from it. No shocker there. But um, so here's a story, though, that I was picking up on. And, and we all can, I think, uh, we all can relate to this one big time because even if you're not in a migrant city and you're hearing these tales and we've heard them for a while now. Um, so this is um, a person who came into the country illegally. Um, he's from Turkey. Um, and he was saying how the, the process is just too long. Um, so he basically is, he was optimizing this window of time that we are in right now where there's a lawless border and, he came over and he paid the cartel $6,500 to drop him at the border. They took him to the end of a hiking trail with a bunch of other people. This is what, where they dropped them off. Um, and now his plan is already in place. He has a phone and he has a DoorDash account set up in Santa Monica for him where he will now be dashing. Not him, not his account, not legal. But this is very common. This kind of relates to what now what Kim just told us. So a guy like this comes into the country. He finds Kim's channel. He's on YouTube. Sees the area. Sees. I mean, OK, so I mean, I don't know. To me, in so many ways, I'm not saying and not anything about the people crossing illegally. But there's even a thing in here that says that this guy's saying he because he needs to do DoorDash for three months because he needs 180 day, days to wait for the work authorization, even in a legal status. And I got to say, you don't have a legal status yet. You crossed illegally, illegally. You're not on the book. So your 180 days hasn't started. I, I think, and this is, I have nothing to prove this by, but I have my own theory that even if they get deactivated from an account, there's another account that they can get on. Like they, there's so many illegal accounts that they don't even care whether they get deactivated or their account gets found out. They have another account waiting for them to be activated on. Like it's a vicious cycle of, you know, accounts that are just cycling through that it doesn't even phase them to, you know, cancel an order, you know, whatever it's going to take, like what people get, you know, deactivated for, they're just going to go on to another account. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's just, that's just, it's ridiculous. It's scary. When I heard you telling that tale, I was totally relating to it. But when I heard you tell that one portion of it, I started thinking, see, this is, this is way too far. Well, yeah. it's also because she's a, she's a, a woman. That's not, I'm not being sexist or anything, no. but like, no, but at the same time, wouldn't you be creeped out too, Jason? I mean, some dude well, even comes I, I, out and through Google Translate is saying, give me the blueprint of your city. I've been watching your channel. Well, first, I would be flattered because I was famous enough for someone to recognize me. And then I would tell him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you should have been flattered, kid. I'm just saying I'm not that popular yet. <laughs> so you literally would be like, Hey man, thanks for noticing me with the backhand all in one oh, sentence. No, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I can't relate to all your the the immigrant stuff. We don't have that. Up. I mean, I'm sure we do, but not like to the scale that right, you're all right. talking about. Yeah. Um, I just can't believe that they can come up with so many fake accounts and that you can sell. You can buy them on Facebook you for can buy them. Bucks. Well, wasn't it during when this was all like when it was starting to happen, Steve, didn't I share with you a video? Like I took a video of my own market and I mm -hmm. said, I'm going to drive two blocks. And how many mm -hmm. car, how many cars did I count? I counted 10 cars in a two block radius, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit. I mean, now for, you know, I mean, this is I mean, it doesn't matter. It's if you go Kim's direction towards boss, wherever you go in that area of New York City, it's just there's so many people doing it that, of course, they're leaving the city. Wouldn't there's no be, money to be made there. So they're moving to other cities. Wouldn't it solve the problem if every time which would be annoying? I'm not saying it wouldn't be that every time you signed on to any of those apps, you had to verify with your driver's license or. But they don't want to ver well, they don't want to catch well, this them. is this oh. is the funny thing. So last last week, 
maybe it was two weeks ago, they did the verification on DoorDash. So I've had to do the verification now once a month. So it's more than just the once a year I was getting. So <laughs> I want to say it was like last Thursday or last, it was one of those days. Anyway, um, that night I decided to work in the area it used to work in bad weather and there were no drivers to be found. They were all gone. Hmm. All gone. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Literally, I literally went up and down, you know, the, the all the streets that I knew that like they hang out with. And amazingly, none of them were around on a third. I was a Thursday night on a Thursday on a night. Thursday. Hmm. But they were back the next day. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I know DoorDash doesn't want to, but they will. There will be some class a class action lawsuit at some point down the road because they're not preventing this from happening. So yeah. You think so? I thought was interesting though, this time around, they made me scan my driver's license again. Yeah. Oh. See, that's how you get them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But see, that's, that's yeah. the point. That's, that's a point. good that one. That goes to the Walmart spark thing too. I don't think mm -hmm. either of the platforms care. I really don't. I don't think they care anymore. They're glad that they don't have to use a robo taxi and that somebody's taken the damn dollar order. Right? Yeah. They're just happy about that. They're like, sweet, yeah. dude, I don't care. Don't ever check that person. Cause I get, I get, I've said this many times. I get facial recognition on uh, DoorDash all the time, See, but I don't, I don't use it like Kim and stuff and other people. So when I do, it maybe was... it's because it's inconsistent, but it makes me mad when I have to, because I'm like, oh, I know for a I... fact, you know, accounts you need to check and you're not checking them. No, I, whenever I see it, I do a happy dance because of what I saw that night that I actually right. got it. I actually do a happy dance. So I wish they would honestly do it once a day in my area. I think it would make, honestly, it, will it solve everything? No. But will it pause them from working? Yep. Yeah. It would help a lot. Um. Yeah, I, I don't even I don't know what else to say about that. I'm I'm I mean, if any of you guys in the chat are relating to this or live in areas where this is happening, I see it every day. So it's a little different for me. Like I was watching uh, Terry had a live today going uh, uh, Terry's tips, tricks and talk. She's here in Denver as well. And um, she pulled up into Home Depot and she's like, oh, look, watch this. And there's like 50 of them right there just jumping out in her car. And I'm not talking like the old days of people wanting work. This is the new and my the one by my house is even worse. I mean, they're just everywhere out there. Don't speak any English at all. Looking for any work at all. Yeah, I mean, um, you, you kind of got to be like, I'm, <laughs> I wouldn't leave my car. I'm not trying to be mean, but I wouldn't leave my car at Home Depot right now. Well, I'm just saying, like, just because they don't speak English doesn't mean, you know what I mean, that they're illegal aliens. No. You know what I mean? So well, that's why I clarified to say like before we were migrant city, because we do have that status now. People are aware of this. Yeah. So it's not a, it's not a, I'm not being mean. I'm just being honest. Um, but before we had that, there, there might be three, four people out there looking for some work, but not 40, 50 every right. day by the lines. What determines when you guys become like a migrant city? Is it like how, I mean, we've because it's not every state we've that's having we've, this we've bust over sixty thousand here in the last eight months. So I mean, but if what, that does, you know, that's what that's a lot. That? Like, who decides? Okay, this this city is going to become so, a migrant city versus this one is not. So, like, when Texas needed to get rid of all the people illegally crossing, uh -huh. they look for governors to work in partnership with. Otherwise, they they have just tried, uh, like Governor Abbott from Texas has just tried busing up some to other places and going, you deal with them. But he has found people, and sadly, he's found coordination here in Colorado that now we're trying to get out of, like, dude, stop doing that. Even the people who made the agreement with him are ending up being like, yo, stop busing up the people. And to get really technical and a little evil here, to be honest... There's money involved in all this. Well, yeah. Yeah. My point being, are you not selling people? I don't know. Isn't that right? I mean, you're you don't want them where you are. You're making a trade for monetary value to get them the hell out of your state and put them somewhere else. 
by the mass, by the thousands. I mean, to me, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not trying to say, you know, it's like, it's definitely not slavery, but what is it? I mean, it's, it's wrong. You know, some of these people are getting bussed up to like winter places. They've never seen snow in their life. Yeah. I saw Hannibal did a, <laughs> like, <laughs> a report in New York and he was right. And that's like how... New York. Think if you got shipped to like North Dakota. I mean, it's snow in the summer up there. Like, what are you going to do now? Like, you don't even know how to deal with this. And the other thing about migrant cities, too, is we you start dedicating areas. So, like, we have some migrant tent villages here in Denver that are just beyond extremely huge. Um, and, and also, like, they, you know, it just gets into some real issues because we have a homeless problem here that's pretty bad. Um, so you get into a real conflict there on how the city helps, doesn't help the homeless at all, but the, some of the migrants have credit cards Yeah, and they're being issued them. And so the homeless are going, what the hell? Yeah, You know, it's, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's, it's just such, I don't, I'm not saying I have the solution. I don't really, <laughs> I don't, but what, That's whatever's tough, going on, on all levels is wrong. Yeah. And if you're here in Denver, you know what I'm saying? And you can totally, you're right there with me. We don't have to agree on anything else. We don't have to agree on politics and none of that stuff. If you're here in Denver, you get it. We're feeling it right now. And I'm not just talking about gig jobs being taken away. I'm talking about driving down the street. You see them. You see all the situations going on everywhere. Mm. So. Yeah, it's 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 just it's tough because when it first happened, God, I forget. I think it was like it was right after summer because I came out of like the summer rush by me. And then like all of a sudden, like it's it's something that stands out, at least in my area, it stands out because you see all these out of state plates like you see like and it's all the same car, by the way. I'm not going to say what car it is, but it's all the same car. And they all drive right? the same car. <laughs> and it's, it's it's very strange. But like it, it, all of a sudden I started seeing all these New York license plates in my area and all like Pennsylvania. I'm like, what the heck? And then I started noticing they were drivers because they were going in and out of restaurants. And the next thing I know, like you because you you're observant when you don't have orders. Right. You sit and you watch and see what's going on. And there was one day like one guy was driving a, gr a gray car and the next day he was driving a black car but one day he was driving new york plates the next day he was driving pennsylvania plates like i'm like what the heck is like i couldn't figure it because out because they're and keeping then, the cars going in cycles yeah yeah so yeah like, you're like is he a twin and then you're like no no same but guy. it's basically like no. he drives eight hours somebody else drives eight or somebody else drives eight hours but that's not perfectly timed so the one car isn't back yet so he's moving into the other car so crazy. Like it might and, be a system of nine people, three cars. But the funny thing is, like I I live in a small, like a small town, like a small town. Like I I like. I'm but there's like, no work in New York City because they've like, they've overrode it so much. I'm not even close. Like I I mean I'm I'm an hour and twenty minutes from New York City, so like they still have to drive a pretty decent distance. But I'm like, why my like why my my area like it's so it, to me it was so random and then i just started you know stuff started happening and i'm like oh my god i'm such an idiot <laughs> but at the same time i would guess kim you could like out kind of that's what i was kind of saying you can go to yours or to other towns that far distance yeah. from new york city all the way around the scope and it's not just going to be you it's going to be all those cities are being yeah. attacked yeah yeah you know, I see Jersey man's in here and he's saying that he see. I saw that or a second ago, he was saying something about um, seeing a lot of uh, Pennsylvania and New York plates. I'm guessing because he's been around for a while. I'm guessing that and we all know him. I'm guessing that he's talking about that didn't used to be the case. Obviously, that's the comparison he's making there, um, or at least that it's a lot more because otherwise he wouldn't have made that comment. Um, I don't know if you're if you're near one of these true migrant cities, you get it. And I guess. My whole thing that now becomes, you know, what some of the topics were here today. You know, I was talking on the podcast this week. I had Terry on and we were talking about is the LOP gone? She hands down said, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. I've had many people tell me it's gone. I mean, Kim and I talked to Abdul at, uh, at Display Ride um, about a year ago, wasn't it? About when we yeah. were telling him about when he was really telling us about telematics and we were pitching that about the school idea, right? 
that yeah. this would be great for school-aged kids and stuff. Well, DoorDash has entered telematics now. And that's, you can, we don't even need to wait for legislation. Every state in this country now has, DoorDash has broken the terms of independent contractors. But in the other ones, it's questionable, but you can't, you can't keep tabs on how people are driving. You can't do it. Well, not without their permission. No, exactly. Even the, the TOS checkbox, though, we, for one, we know that the judges are getting pissed off by those. They're done. They're like, these are getting ridiculous, you guys. You cannot be saying, hey, we own your firstborn kid by checking this box. Like, you, enough. You can't just say, check, check this. And I don't think it's just gig economy stuff. It's everything that's turning into these agreements. Like, you agree to sell. We, we're going to sell everything that you own. Okay. <laughs> I think the I think the worst term of service if you get deactivated they keep your money, the money that you've earned. I think that's the biggest scam out but there. On on all jokes but aside, let's talk about the LOP program just for a little bit. I'm not going to say whether Go it's gone, not gone, but I th my personal opinion. I think customers who order and this is what I've seen is they got tired of ordering from the DoorDash platform because of the service they're receiving on these hundreds of dollars worth of orders. And I think honestly, they got fed up. I mean, I talked to one restaurant this past week that I know really well, know on a personal level, and she was saying they stopped using them because the driver would always arrive late or if they weren't ready exactly on time, they would just cancel it and it would, they'd be a cycle of drivers. And then they would have to eat up the $20 late fee costs from Easy Cater from dispensing it to through DoorDash. So they just stopped using it altogether. I mean, the other week I used to have faithfully every single Tuesday, a faithful customer. I knew what restaurant to sit at because I knew he would get his order. It was, oh, I, it was the same price every single week. Stop. And I'm like, oh, maybe another driver is getting it. And then I did a, um, a delivered and it was the same customer. Mm. So I don't think that yeah. they are trusting, <clears throat> in my opinion, I don't think they're trusting the DoorDash platform with hundreds of dollars worth of food if they're not getting what they're paying for, if that makes any sense. It totally mm -hmm. does. I, mean, I don't not, think it's not, every I mean, order, it's, but it's, a per think... it's the perfect storm with DoorDash right now. I mean, all the apps are suffering a bit, but I feel like they're in like one of the worst. Yes, they're where Cheyenne is. They're in Canada too. But even like she's said, they're barely there or yeah. whatever, you know, like, but they're not elsewhere. I mean, what is it? Just take away or just eat or whatever that now pro one owns the other and is an affiliation over in Europe and whatnot. But nonetheless, there isn't DoorDash globally like Uber Eats. And I mean, they're just from all directions, the volume's down. They're adding money onto the customer's bill. I was reading on this Seattle pay up. I've got it opened up on what they're actually doing there. And it's ridiculous. I mean, they say that the order volume there is just, just blown up. It's gone. Like nobody's ordering food anymore. So what does it do? The point is, what does it even matter? And so they're actually trying to repeal the entire legislation in seattle the pay up model they don't even want it anymore yeah doesn't just work. real quick the delivery carries that because the scummy people steal food and ruin it for the good drivers can you imagine these people stealing lar like large orders large 200 orders? 300 dollars worth of food <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm like <laughs> i mean you know yeah i can't I'm, I'm to be honest i think there's enough of a buzz i mean if the tony shoe interview with the rideshare guy was even anywhere correct with his numbers. And I know he said active, but I think he meant of all time. Um, when he, you know, when it was what it was over 10 million people in the United States have dashed, I think is what he meant. I don't think he means currently dash. I think he means have dashed. Well, that's 170 million are the American workforce, even including independent contractors and freelancers and self-employed. So, and W-2. So, I mean, like, so one out of every 17 people who work in this country have dashed? <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the math, guys. It's not hard to do. Like, <laughs> and I, I mean, like, I guess we all have, but at the same time, I find that really crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, my point being, too, like, if they have dashed and a lot of them don't anymore because it's not, doesn't have the monetary value it once did, they're very familiar. They've probably told their friends. People are getting alerted. People are getting turned on to these fees. 
I mean, like, since we're on it, I'll just bring it up here real quick that these fees are ridiculous. Like in Minneapolis, listen to this. I just, I had a couple just to share with you guys so that we kind of had an idea of what they're doing with these menu items, but so um, well, tonight for just just real quick for the heck of it this is a doordash this is uber eats they were running like one of their promos and i'm like oh maybe i'll use it and go pick it up because i hate doing delivery nowadays and i'm like oh i'll go pick it up well the promo didn't apply to the pickups it was only delivery so i'm like whatever i'll just order it on my own but for pickup ready for this for pickup they did a service fee of six dollars and 99 cents for a pickup hmm. what's the service fee covering <laughs> i have Access absolutely no platform. idea somebody to hold the door for kim when she got there or something I don't not know. even <laughs> <laughs> I, I was i was baffled because it went from like 25 dollars you're paying to, to use their platform dollars. And I'm you're like, paying to process it through their credit card processor that charges them 20 cents yeah, it was six. And they're charging you seven bucks. That's normal business, isn't it? Six nine nine's a I lot. I still have it up. No, I was kidding. Paper. I was kidding. I think it's ridiculous. Um, but here's here's what's going on in Seattle. Just so you guys know, on January thirteenth of this <laughs> year, that's when it went into effect for non rideshare drivers, but for delivery drivers as well. Seventy four cents per mile and five and wait and forty four cents per minute and a five dollar minimum order on everything. According to that, minimum wage becomes twenty six forty instead of Seattle's nineteen ninety seven. However, you can't get the full hour. We know how this goes. DoorDash is throttling people in Seattle less or eat more than even in New York City. So they're lucky if they're getting around forty percent active time on an hour. So therefore, what did this all do for them? Nothing. What did it do to the customers? Um, the customers are now paying just ridiculous amounts of money. Um, they're paying, they have to pay a $5 um, uh, necessary cost fee. That's the line item. Um, and it's it's called necessary cost of doing business in Seattle. That's the line item fee. Mm. Necessary cost of doing business what? in Seattle? Now, now, mind you, they're charging a $5 line item to people who are getting the delivery in Seattle that says that. But again, Sergio brought this up a long time ago with the rideshare stuff in Prop 22. They're not, they're actually making a dollar on that and still paying the regulatory fees. But let's even make it worse. We also know they upcharge items on the menu in like Gary's state of Florida. Gary Middleton sent us that article last week that said that they were going to make it so that all of the items had to be same on all the menus. Well, that's not the case in um, Seattle right now. Here's an example. So uh, somebody did, this is somebody's, comparison they ordered from grill bird uh fifth directly through grill bird um an order of food 54 dollars. they ordered it the next afternoon not a prime time none of that which shouldn't matter anyway same thing on the doordash app the next afternoon 85 dollars pre-tip instead of 54 now get this um that restaurant we were talking about um spice walla very popular there. If you go into Spice Walla, you can get a chicken, uh, one of their chicken rolls, and it's nine dollars. If you get it on DoorDash, it's nineteen. Jeez. Whoa. That's ridiculous. So the one item. That is whoa. Now, how much is that money going to the restaurant though? Because they up. I don't think any dude. I honestly think they get the order money, and that's how DoorDash always has offset it. They've said. Listen, you don't have to pay us any fees because we'll collect it on upcharging the menu. Oh, so I thought you, it was you, the restaurant that upcharged to compensate yeah. for the fee that they have to pay. That's what I thought too. Well, that's to the because well, I know that's what, what like, that's what I'm saying. That's the fee, I guess. That's what I thought. But it's the restaurant doing it. It's not DoorDash. Right. Doing it. Well, right. Yeah. But it's either you can pay us this amount of money, or and they've already kind of got it metrically worked out for you. Here's where your items would be priced at, and you won't have to pay us anything. Oh, yeah. I see. They can. I see. Okay. And all the restaurants choose that route. Oh, interesting. I know originally it was the restaurants, at least like when Uber Eats started and stuff like that. Maybe when DoorDash did start, but um, yeah, that's yeah. They probably play the game of which is a better deal. <laughs> I mean, dude, to know that when if to know though that in this place, uh, Spice Walla, 
for those that are not in Seattle, I'm not either. Um, it does do its own delivery. So it can deliver you that chicken roll for $9. Mm. But you can get it through DoorDash for 19 So if you want five of them, you can pay 100 bucks, or you can pay under 50 and just go in and or get it directly from them. The thing is, though, people are still using the app. It's not slowed down at all. Well, in, but in Seattle, it has. Well, maybe. Yeah, I'm just saying. The volume's way you know. down, dude. People, yeah. in fact, this article goes on to say that that's why they're repealing the 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 decision because people are deleting the apps. People are, the they're not just, they're just not using it. It doesn't even matter what areas. They're just not using it. Man, that sucks the for the drivers, too. The thing yeah, because this was supposed to benefit catering. them. This is what happens when you... But remember, not everyone voted for that. Like that's Oh, I know. The, the I mean, the council members don't want it anymore. Yeah. And a lot of them did vote for it. So the thing that I wonder, though, for the large large orders, right? So Kim was saying, you know, the restaurants, they're going away from DoorDash. But these catering companies, are they offering some type of promos to like entice the restaurants to come towards them so maybe that's also another reason why they're going away from doordash um, and uber eats to no, go to from, the what, I know, from what i know um and i talked to another restaurant the other day that i do catering with they actually pay easy cater a little bit more like a, a bigger fee or whatever to promote their restaurant like above all the other restaurants so they actually okay. get more business so I think it's like the old, you know, marketing, you know, you, you know, pay money to get money back. So I think yeah. they're dipping out a lot more money up front to get the payback um, from getting more catering orders. So, you know, I don't think they offer promos. I just think they offer like packages that make it work for the companies. Makes sense. Get some marketing in there. Yeah. And I know everybody joining in the chat. I know we're way far into tonight and I thank you everybody for joining us. I'm sorry. I didn't go through name by name there. I like to do it in the beginning before too many of you are in here, but now there's a lot in here. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you everybody for joining us. Um, Just real quick, that. because I think Thomas makes, uh, you know, a very valid point because we've talked about this before. Illegals can't do shop and delivers. That's where lots of money is, especially on DoorDash. They can't get the red card. Oh, interesting. Wait, well, why can't they get the red card? Because it's not so their it's account. another account. <laughs> it's not even not their, their name. So how how are they? No, but that account. Money? Wait, wait, wait. No, but that account can get the red card and then they just swap the but red a card. A lot of those people, I don't think I don't think people they don't are, even know most... how to use the app to shop. Yeah. I mean, that's number one. But number two, I don't do think a, I don't think a lot of these people are people like me going, Oh, I've got a DoorDash account. I'll just sell it to this guy. I don't think yeah. that's what's really happening. I think that they're being stolen from like people who have dashed, who haven't dashed in like six months and their account just hasn't been used. But why wouldn't they be able to get a red card though? No, my point is I think they're getting like, I think somebody's hacking those accounts and getting them sold. They don't really even know it's being sold. So that could only really work for like a year. Until when it's tax time and oh no, because that's Dornash what's happening right now. Well, yeah. But again, they're not doing anything about it. <laughs> I mean, they're not cracking down on any they're they're facial recognition, me and Kim. They don't care about the illegal accounts. And they I mean, you I mean I'm gonna be honest, of course it's an algorithm, but they know who the illegal accounts are, at least some of them. Sure they do. And this but they're is the, again, they're the ones that take on every Uber. order. They take every order. But so what do they this care? Is, this is my honest opinion. And this it goes for Spark. It goes for DoorDash. It goes for any one of these companies who allow this to happen. They're getting orders delivered because they're taking every single order. And they honestly don't care because the orders are getting delivered. They're making money on the back end because orders are getting delivered. So as long as the orders are getting delivered, honestly, they're never going to do anything about it. That's my opinion. But but do you see this issue on Uber? No. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't Uber think any of like... us do enough Uber Eats to know. Oh, yeah, that's true. You guys don't do a lot of it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, there's just no orders. Maybe it is. I don't know. I, but again, I just Uber's, think all these Uber's companies global, know. I think they care a little more. I don't know. I, well, it's because the verification, like it's a different process. Like when you start up your your 
like your day, you have to do some type of verification. And then, you know, after three, like the clients or whatever, they'll kick you off. You got to go back on. Sometimes you have to take a picture. Sometimes you don't. So it's like, you never really know. Right. So maybe that's why they don't attempt no, to go on to Uber. Because all of, of these companies, Uber, DoorDash, Spark, they all have social media platforms, markets, mm. whatever, whatever you want to call departments. And their job is to comb through social media to see what's going on with their companies. If I, I would be naive to think that DoorDash hasn't looked at any one of our contents. They, they've looked at some of our videos. They know what's going on. I mean, especially some of the ones. Then when they get, they're watching this, you know, why aren't they checking people? Right now. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. But honestly, you know, you think of some of the, not just me, you know, some of the biggest content creators out there have made like huge videos on the Walmart scam on the, you know, door. Like there's so many things that we made videos on. We know what's going on. Just yeah, go to I Reddit. Mean, you know what's going on. <laughs> I mean, Gigan is. I'm a sure good they know what's going on they about the red. The red card is digital now too. You can have that as well. But again, I think it goes to the point of I don't think that the person X who has the legal account knows, knows how that to work person it. knows that person Y who's using it is using it. Even if they are involved in the transaction of their account being rented out, I don't think they know the end user using it. But here's the thing: How are they able to get the money? Then they they put their own bank. Just account change your in. bank account. Yeah. But and. So you're just saying they can't get the card because they can't change the mailing address? Like, why wouldn't they be able to change How the many address? people have we heard on all these YouTube channels, on all these Facebook groups, on all these Reddits? I got scammed because I fell for, I went to go pick up three packets of ketchup and they told me to cancel the order and I gave them all of my information and they got into yeah. my account. Like... They're, so, they're scamming so many different ways and there's so many different ways to get an account. I mean, for a while, for Spark, there were these, they were the people, they were going to customer's house and asking for your driver's license to verify that this was the order. They were taking pictures of their driver's license to create accounts. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no way I would do that. Wow. I mean, Spark is, I mean... We were talking about that too. Spark is, I mean, Spark is no better. And by the way, Dashing Grandpa is going to talk about a subject I had on here tonight after this because we're definitely not going to get to it. But he specifically is going to be talking about um, this Spark offering money back that they stole from drivers. If you guys didn't hear about that, mm -hmm. um, they sent out an email to all Spark people. Um, do I even have, I don't think I have it here, but wait, maybe I do. Um, but they they basically sent out an email that I don't know. Kim, did you get it? Did you guys all get it? What was it? I'm not on Spark, so I don't know. Oh, you don't know what the email even is? Oh, I have I have the picture right here. I'm on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> As part of our continued efforts to improve the Spark driver platform experience, we've identified some trips where yes. you may not have collected and issued tips customers meant for you due to a system system issue. Maybe because I haven't about? worked. Maybe because I haven't worked Sparked in like months. Maybe that's why I didn't get it. I didn't get any tips. But I guess they're combing back through there, and people are owed tips. Who and how much? Nobody knows. But yeah, they're going to get. In, I think um, Graham's class action get suit a little waiting bit to happen. Like how? Well, they're trying to fix. But that's it just admitting that, that you happens. just. I know, right? That's I mean. They're like, we're oh, sorry. Did. I'm sorry. Here. DoorDash, DoorDash got sued for stealing tips twice. Two times they got caught. And both times it was literally, I'm sorry. And they hired attorneys, tried to fight it to a level. And then they were like, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, we didn't mean to do that. Well, clearly it was. Was it Bud Soda that just said earlier that Delivered got accused for stealing tips? He doesn't believe it, but... It's something circulating. I think right everybody now. accuses. Yeah, I've heard I've heard the delivered thing before too. I'm not really I think we have the delivered CEO on the podcast and um and he we actually asked I we asked him and he explained that whole system and you know how maybe it was mis misinterpreted, but it wasn't it wasn't stealing. Um <clears throat> I know I see Tim in here gig wise, and I know a lot of people in here have um have experience with that platform um but I, I i mean even i know delivered but like tim has a lot uh he might be able to kind of better say what how how they explained the tip debacle because i don't really remember it i just remember the ceo and we had the cso a couple about a month before that on 
uh, both from delivered and they both kind of had, you no, know, they, they were, they were aware. They're like, Oh, the tip thing. Hold on. Let me explain all this. And I don't know. I think people have a way of, um, of, I, I think there was a way that you could have a tip in there and it was like tip baiting. You could pull it out or something. And sometimes that was done. And some, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't want to misquote it, but basically when he explained it, it made sense to me and everybody can come out of the woodwork and say that every app is stealing because DoorDash has been caught doing it. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly, you know, any, anybody can make anybody sound bad Oh, because, for sure. because, because the other apps are so bad that it's not, it's not far fetched to believe that if somebody's like, Hey, did you hear DoorDash steals? All of a sudden, everybody's going to believe that because somebody mentioned it. When really there might be no, even no justification behind it at all. Yeah. So to me, that's, it, and you know, unless you, unless you got, unless you got receipts, I'm not really buying into that stuff. Well, no, um, Thomas, like, okay. So Thomas says the migrants also can't get on catering apps, background checks, but there are background checks with all these other apps. Are they like that much harder to get onto? For the well, catering using app someone else's like, account. Yeah, exactly. it's not it's not their account anyway. So yeah, so like, if they think, can get on the other ones, they can get on. The I think with the other or, ones. Okay, don't give them any be. ideas, there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm gonna. I'm just I'm gonna saying. What, <laughs> what are you I'm doing? Go back to what Kim was saying, though, too, though, like, and I, and honestly, like, this isn't just, I'm, um, you know, this, this is real. Is that on other apps they would get caught very quickly? You can't be in that. You can't not speak a language and shove a phone in a B two B's place on Roadie or or even roadie, but curry, any of those that you're done. I mean, this, the red card, I don't, maybe it's not just about how do you get it? It's about, they're afraid to have it for some reason, that red card and running it face to face, that interface makes them think they're committing a crime where they don't think they are like this guy who just got here and all these other people who already have accounts lined up. Like for some reason, they don't think that's a crime, but they definitely for some reason with the card and transacting with somebody face to face, I think that's a problem for them because the language barrier isn't even bad. It's gone. But not only that, they, a lot of these um, catering apps, they expect high levels of customer service, man. You don't do a customer service, right? I, I, I mean, I've never experienced it, but I would assume they'd be like, nope, sorry, you're gone. Like <laughs> I have another driver waiting. I mean, that's that's the scariest part to me is that any of any of the of the four of us and any of you watching in live chat could be gone at any minute for no reason at all. For no reason at all. I mean, look at I mean, look at Marco. Mar I think Marco is a perfect example, to be honest. Marco has twenty two thousand plus dashes. He's done over twenty two thousand dashes and he got deactivated on a day he didn't work. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And he was deactivated for three months. And then out of nowhere, after all his fighting, going through the red tape, everything was clean, legit. He's going, what the, what the, what the? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, after he had given up the fight, he was reactivated out of nowhere. There you go. Yeah, it's so weird. Sorry about that. Like, what the hell, dude? Yeah. You know, I mean, like, that's a 22,000 plus Dasher, that's not just a veteran. That's somebody you want on your team. Mm. I think Gigan has it right. There are a crap ton of gig apps out there besides the big three food delivery apps. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, I, I mean, we tell people this all the time. You're going to make more money on the other ones. Mm. Yeah. You're going to have to, you might have to piecemeal them together. You might have to start multi apping on a bigger level than you have. But if you <laughs> want to make the most money and you're really outdoing this, you're not just sitting on DoorDash. And I don't care if you're a top dasher. I don't care if you're a hundred percent or right now, you can't just be sitting on DoorDash. You're not yeah. going to, you're not going to make enough to anywhere near what you have in the past. Yeah. For the majority of people, it's not going to happen. I just mean the tips are even gone. People are coming out of the pandemic. We've talked about this before. They, they can't afford the service anymore. They don't even know that. The only thing they have the control to pull is the tip. Well, they're tip, the people are tip exhausted now. I saw this meme where it was a cop. <laughs> he was like, now there's going to be a new uh, tip your cop whenever I stop you for a ticket. And there was like a tablet that said like ticket price XYZ, tip 5%, 10%. Like was, everyone's talking about tips now. So I think people are just tired of tipping as well. 
And yeah, they you know, can't afford it. But I don't know. Maybe, it. maybe I don't. I don't disagree with you, JJ Green. However, I'm just being honest, man. I mean, look at. I mean, I, I'm. There aren't customers watching this going, "Hmm, I can't afford the service." Honestly, you know what if I mean? it, like, I'm, so, I'm with the Lou. If they can't afford it, don't order because then you're going to put the zero tips. You're going to put the one dollar tips. Like exactly. Don't. <laughs> I mean, if that means the volume goes down, that's why there's caps coming into markets. That's why they're not going to let as many people roll out. And that makes sense to me. You should be doing that. Yeah. I mean, other apps have their own ways of doing that. Curry, it's a long onboarding system for a lot of people. And this and that and the other. I prefer that. I'm still on yeah. the Amazon Flex wait list. Jason's <laughs> been doing it forever. Two years. You know? It ain't that great. But at the, <laughs> I'm just pointing out, like, there's a reason for that wait list. I don't know. It's so that the people who they are on Flex can Amazon actually work it. That though. I can't even get on. Right. My point is, is that even if like the pay isn't that great, like Jason's alluding to or whatever he's saying, it's still you can get some gigs on Flex, though. Yeah, for sure. I could work every day. Right. That's my point. There you go. I'd much rather have it so that I can get gigs than you've been onboarded. But yeah. there's a lot of migrants, so you're never going to get an order. Okay, well. Great. I mean, like, I don't need the app if it's not going to do anything. Right. You know, I'd much rather it have be paced and say you're, and I've been saying this too, like, what would be so wrong with it saying you're, you know, if you are trying to dash now, your market's full right now. There's no need for you. Check back later. Yeah. That's what, you know, rather that's what we used that. to do in the bar industry, ebb and flow. You know, and when somebody was needed, be like, hey, man, can you come on down or have somebody that's supposed to be on at nine calls in? Hey, come in at 10. You can come in an hour late because we're not, it's not, it's kind of dead right now. Like, why wouldn't you be on, more on, like not, I mean, I get you're not going to be fully honest. I get you can't be fully transparent, but you can't even like make sure there's not 3000 too many door dashers on the road. I, I don't understand to be honest with you. And to your point, I get the flow of, you know, the peaks and valleys of orders, but to the point where you're oversaturating that drivers can't make money, like that's an issue. Like why is DoorDash allowing so many drivers flooding a market to the point where drivers are making money? Well, it's the like, same. Even it's the if same you're point. in flux at that point. Sorry, your your internet was cutting out there, but no, um, go ahead. It, uh, Sorry. <laughs> it's the same point that the companies don't care. They'll flood the market because as long as that order gets delivered, they don't care if their illegals are doing it or whatnot, in my opinion. but Right, but I mean, at a certain level, wouldn't you think like, okay, we've got 300% what we need. Stop letting people dash now. <laughs> like, I mean, they kind even of that's do. too much. I mean, even well, that's like ridiculous. So it's well in the last nine months they've changed that. I used to be able to sure. dash pretty much any time it was busy. Now the, and that and they would give me a couple hours. Now it's like they give me like these forty five minute blocks, and then they're like, okay. "Well, okay, then then like, we'll what use, am I supposed to do with this?" And we'll use Uber Eats <laughs> then for the thing because Uber Eats doesn't do that, and they let everybody on, and that's why none of us see orders. I don't. I see orders on Uber Eats. I, like I mean, I do too. My, all the ones I see, though, are very long for very low pay. I mean, the, it's definitely less than DoorDash, but I, I do, I do do some uh, Uber Eats with the DoorDash at times. You, so. you said doo doo. I knew yeah, you. Yeah, I heard that too. I was like, <laughs> <in> the curve. <laughs> <laughs> you are in like a very weird headspace today. <laughs> yeah, look out. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you see over here, Skip actually stops you. So like if you're not on shift, so if you don't have a schedule, then even if you put yourself as available, if they don't need you, that screen is not turning green for you to be able to go on. So it's for like I, I rather that for Skip. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah, no, Uber lets you go on. Yeah. But I it's busy that. here. So right. Right. But I mean, like when you turn Uber Eats on, is it, is it, I guess it is a lot different than here. Cause I, I always forget that when you say that that's the market leader and the DoorDash is the trash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe Uber Eats is just kind of outweighing that because I don't know. I was, I, you know, I was, I showed Gary, you know, maybe I was trying to tell Kim earlier in the week. I don't remember if I tried to tell Kim or not, but um, I was contacted through the dumpling app by a restaurant in the Highlands that has a delivery guy. But I thought they were looking for a single order that was going outside of their delivery zone because of the way they approached me in the dumpling uh, shop rep. 
<laughs> so <clears throat> I had never added food delivery. So I had to text Holly because um, Holly does a ton of dumpling as for a while. And so I texted her, I said, Holly, what do I do with this? And she's like, oh, and she sent me the screenshot. She's, she's like, just add restaurant. You can just put it through right there and then they can, you know, whatever they'll authorize the card. You can go do whatever you want to do. They were looking for me to do like weekend deliveries out of the delivery area for them so that they can get rid of DoorDash. Mm. Really? Did this you is ask the how restaurant. Much? <laughs> well, no, know, I'm, gonna, right? I'm actually going to, I'm going to talk to him. Yeah. Why wouldn't I talk to him? I That's would. I I'd be like, so how, so how much? Like if it's worth yeah. it. I would totally wonder. I mean, yeah. I mean, it might not even be me, but I know delivery drivers right where this place is. Highlands is, is about, you know, 15 minutes from me, but I know people who drive who live right in the Highlands. So I'm definitely going to go have a conversation with this person. We've already been communicating through the dumpling. I mean, for them to go to the dumpling app and they had heard something about dumpling resort and they were like, you know, maybe we can like go this way. I mean, this this is where restaurants are at. They don't want to work with these companies anymore either. Customers no. are are up to speed. The restaurants hate these platforms. Yeah. I mean, some of us know that a lot of restaurants rely on these platforms, but they hate them. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they like them just because they rely on them. Right, they hate them. They hate them. Um, I'm not, Tim's talking about something. They're just like, they have to work with them or else, you know, financially they're going to get a hit, but they don't like working with them. Well, see, and that's what's weird about this restaurant that approached me because I'm being careful like Kim. Of course, I'm not going to say the name or anything stupid, Um, but the they approached me because they do a good enough business that they don't have to have DoorDash. They do like the extra delivery money, but they're wondering, can't this be done in a more, uh, in a way that's definitely more in line with our pricing model. And they, I think they saw on dumpling resort, they went to dumpling and dumpling now pr- promotes dumpling resort over everything else. But when they went there, they set, they saw fixed prices, you know, um, all menu items, all in-store prices. Like you're paying for what their prices are plus a processing fee. It's very straightforward. Mm-hmm. And it's fixed every time. They use their menu prices. They're like, this is what... Because again, they do delivery. How can you do delivery when you have a $9 chicken roll that DoorDash sells for 19 <laughs> well, well, I don't only get about DoorDash, right? So they used to... Used to being the key word. You used to have catering bag required. You had to have a catering bag in order to do some of these large orders. But yet you have a bad pass button that you just have to hit. I don't have my bag and you can continue on with the delivery. So <laughs> they have all these bypasses. I mean, the other day it was like a pin number and you had to, you know, get the pin number from the customer who was handed to me. But you can bypass that, too. It's like every process they have in place to prevent stuff from happening. They also have a bypass button. So what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. How dare you? I mean, I see that it's funny that Holly, I see it was 801. She says, hey, I think she missed it. I was just talking about you, Holly. Yeah, she came in right after (laughs) you finished talking about her. I think your ears were ringing. (laughs) I see Bud Soda saying this too, that he's been pushing for that way, for that only way. They'll let me. I was trying to understand this, but. So yeah, something you're talking about the franchise agreement with DoorDash. They they can any restaurant can get out of that in a heartbeat. That's not a big thing. Even if can they it? signed year long, yeah, absolutely. Those contracts. Like are let's not say you own a all. McDonald's. All you need well, to McDonald's do is have a lawyer a and you can get out of it. Just a lawyer's letter will get you out of it. I don't know really? about McDonald's. They yeah, got. So I don't you. know about no, McDonald's. No, of course, of course not. They're yeah, of course not. But I'm not trying to to nag McDonald's on my dumpling well, account. No. I don't so, think anyone would want to be I'm talking about these good luck with that one. Before the pandemic did amazing, are very well known for their locations. And you have people within a delivery zone paying what you would pay if you go in. And then if you live just outside that delivery zone, you're paying 19 instead of nine. Do you see what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden this becomes so like it just doesn't work for them anymore. They don't want to do this. Makes sense. And I guess at the end of the day, know? it's also their customers, right? Their customers are, are are getting like the short end of the stick. So they don't yeah, want. I mean, if they have to go to through DoorDash, they're paying that. tons more. 
But yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I even talk to merchants and they're so over drivers just stealing the orders and then losing out on money because it comes out of their pocket opposed to anybody else's pocket. So they're honestly, a lot of them are tired of dealing with all the theft that's been happening just based off of drivers saying they come get the order and then cancel the order and then the customer never gets the order. Yeah, there's certain restaurants I go to that make me start the order before I leave. Yeah. And I never give I never give them shit about it. I'm like, I get it, man. You're you're tired in my head. I'm like, you're tired of getting burned, so I'm happy to do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um Yeah, I don't know. Um Cheyenne, you had so you we can maybe I guess I was just looking at the time. Do we have time to roll out this one la I think we can fit in that story. Do we have time? Uh we could, but there's a question there about telemetrics. Oh, where is Jersey it? man? Steve, did you get? Oh, I first of all, I don't do DoorDash enough to know, but I do. I do know that yes, we did because Tony, the driven dad, had it Tuesday. Oh, he it, had it, it got. He didn't have it Monday. He had it Tuesday. So it has. It is. I mean, if it hasn't got to your market, expect it this week. Is how I'm. And tomorrow's Friday. I do know that. Yes, expect <laughs> Sorry. it tomorrow. Can you explain what it is, please? Because maybe not everyone in the chat knows what. So basically, is. you're getting a driver score every time you drive. It's saying, hey, you're braking or accelerating too much. And it's gauging you on this. And I guess one of my things that I've been talking about in some videos is it says it will not be used against you. Bullshit. And yeah, I don't right. want to relate it back to the migrant situation, but A, they're selling off your telemet met they're selling off your telematics data at about eight times the price of normal data. People pay huge for this. Insurance, insurance companies, companies. Car, car companies even, like car manufacturers, they even want to know how hard are these people breaking? What's good? They want these, they want these numbers. But I think that, watch, we know that every market's beyond oversaturated. Mark my words that this telematics will be a major catapult before legislation to offboard a lot of people. But why? They'll just say you're driving crappy or, they'll driving some, or they won't have explain. They driven in New Jersey. Have they driven in New Jersey lately? <laughs> I'm just saying. I had, I, so if you, you guys all know Tommy, Tommy, thank you for sending that to me. Tommy sent me some screenshots of what it looks like because I have not seen it yet, had not seen it. And so I've seen it now. And it's weird too, because like he sent me one that was green, one that was red, one said negative. It has like negative braking score. And like, how are you? I'm, even when I was looking at it, it's pretty simple, but I was like, how do you read this? What is this? Yeah, it broke. I think I want to say it was in the summer. They started testing it in a couple of markets. And I know couple. everybody was in the uproar because they're like, what the what is this like and it was a whole like invasion of privacy thing and like my thing is i'm like they're just selling it off they're selling off all the information it's it's a total <laughs> breach of privacy and then i guess <laughs> they're getting more money because they rolled it out to many more markets i think what was it what did you have it last week steve uh 200 plus as of wednesday and yeah. then it got rolled out to more i mean but so that's why i'm saying by the end of the week expect in every city if not by next by the end of the month it's going to be everywhere well eric but, but i think it's even going to be before then yeah there's i mean again kim, like kim mentioned it was in a few markets in january february they rolled it out again to like a very few but then last week was the big one on wednesday they put it out to 200 plus cities and that's I had a crazy. lot of people comment on the video I made about it saying that, yeah, it just rolled out for me. It rolled out for me. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. Um, but they <laughs> they can't again, guys, they can't be doing this. We're independent contractors. You This one, this one breaks the law in every of the 50 states. <laughs> well, Uber does the same thing, though. What do you mean? <laughs> they 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 give you driver score. Or they let you know if you're braking too hard or driving too fast. I heard lifted. I've never heard from anybody that Uber. Yeah, I mean, it's not a regular like you get it every day. But if you if they find that you've been speeding and or, you know, <laughs> driving like an asshole, they will send a asshole. Really? Around. Yeah. Really? I've never had anybody yeah. tell me that about Uber. I've had them tell I me get about, it about Lyft. once a month. Lyft and DoorDash. Is that just right? I know we're doing it. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Right chair. Well, according uh, according to Joe <laughs> Johan, I only use DoorDash from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. when none of the legal accounts are out. They love to sleep in his market. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's sad. That, I mean, it, we're laughing, but that's... Well, and he does kind of say, joke. and it's not a yeah. joke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, that. to be honest, like, we do flex our time around things, and now migrants are an issue. I mean, that's you got to work around them now. Yeah, mine are, honestly, mine are out at, like, 6 or 7 o'clock every morning, and they go until, like, 9 or 10 o'clock, sometimes 11 o'clock at night. Like, they're literally... Wow, that's a whole day. Non-stop. Non-stop. Mm -hmm. And you said they're not even from your area. So that means they're driving yeah. like an hour to an hour and a half yeah. to get into your area. And then the same thing at the end. Oof. We'll see. I don't we'll know see if we can. <laughs> yeah, I don't. And that's the I other think thing. I honestly believe they work. run 24 hours a day. I don't think that there's a single person running these cars. They run all the time. But I think this is also why it doesn't work with Uber. Because Uber, you have that 12 hours that you can drive. And then they, they cap you. They shut you off. So it's yeah. like they wouldn't use Uber for that because they're like, oh, 12 hours. Like we're going to have to like switch accounts every time. Let me just switch apps. I think they just say, hey, here you go. And they just hand it to the their brother or their cousin or whoever they're with and say, here you go. You go drive now. None of them are matching the damn picture anyway. No, but it's it's on the account. It's not on the verification. Yeah. So like that account would be out of commission after 12 hours they would need more uber oh i see what you're saying compensate. well maybe yeah. they run uber and then they run doordash and, DoorDash Instacart and I, I don't know maybe they've got a i'm sh I, all these are very systematic from what i can tell they they do things the same every week so how whatever patterns they have they're much different than like us how we pick our areas when we're working and whatnot they're they've got these running 24 7. that's so crazy these are like well-oiled machines that know exactly where to be. I see the guy, I see people sleeping out in front of my bagel shop and things that are some of the good, like places you can nab off some orders sometimes. And they go sleep right in front of them in their cars. Wow. I mean, it's got, it has gotten that bad. So I'm just saying, but um, I do want to, I did want to mention, I did want you to at least mention that because we talked about that lawsuit a while ago. So, and we can do it real quickly here. I want to talk about that, but I also want to talk about, and then just in a couple minutes, what happened in Minneapolis, literally like two minutes because it's kind of a joke, but um, okay, what isn't so a joke is about, what is what Cheyenne looked into. So we could talk about the lawsuit real quick and then I'll tie it into something else that they're doing automated for their female uh, customers. So the there's an Uber sex assault group that's suing to block the Nevada bid to cap all contingency fees for 20 at 20%. So right now Nevada is trying to put in, you know, some kind of ballot or whatever, where um, anyone that is suing, let's say Uber, but it's not just Uber. There's like a long list of other, you could say areas or whatever um, that the lawyers would be capped at 20%. So what that means is, Let's say you go to a lawyer and you're like, you know what? I was sexually assaulted by an Uber driver. Would you please take my case? Now all lawyers, if this goes through, would know that they can only get 20% of whatever it is that you're going to get. So a lot, like the reason why they're fighting it is because they're saying a lot of lawyers won't even want to take the case now because of the fact that they're, they know they're only getting 20% versus, mm -hmm. you know, 33% in one other state and another state has it at 50. So they're saying, okay, we understand that you want to cap it, but why so low as uh, 20%? That's are you, are you asking me my opinion? Cause I can, I can tell you what I think, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think they're doing it just like you said, I think they're doing it. Cause so no lawyer touches it. Exactly. So it, if no lawyer is going to touch it, then nothing is going to be brought forward. And you know, if it happens, it happens figure it out, like, you know, deal with it yourself kind of thing. It, I don't know. It's just the sexual insane. assault cases, by the way, guys have gotten out of control, like out of control. They're like now batching them together. I mean, they're trying to do that in California too. So um. that's really crazy. And then another thing that they're so <laughs> on the other end, um, Uber is now bringing in some new safety features for their female, um, 
passengers, not for the drivers, for the passengers. And it's going to be things like encrypted audio recordings, a pin verification. So let's say like there's going to be a pin on like I go into an Uber, there's going to be a pin on my phone and then the driver would have a pin and they would have to confirm that it's the right one. Uh, live location sharing with friends and family. Um, there's also something that they're thinking of putting in called ride check, which it's going to detect if the ride ends early or stops unexpectedly, or if it's supposed to go, let's say this way, and now your driver goes this way, well, then they're going to be alerted that, you know, you're kind of going off course. So. Which we've seen a hundred million times. It never works. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't. I'm sorry. It just doesn't though. Like we've seen them do all this. It doesn't do anything. So, yeah. um, but the, um, the, what I wanted to say real quick is we've talked about the Minneapolis thing. So as we wrap it up here tonight, guys, um, we've talked about the Minneapolis thing. Here we were. At there was two meetings left. There was one on the 21st. There was one on uh, today. And at today's meeting in Minneapolis, what did they decide? Now, Lyft has countered. Lyft said they'd meet him halfway. We talked about this last week. This is for rideshare in Minneapolis. For those of you who weren't with us last week or who aren't following this, um, they have to pay almost double what they're paying is the new city ordinance. But they're revisiting the amount, and they've pushed the date to July 1st. I'm the surprised. City. My point being, like, we've all been saying, well, let's see a city do it. Let's see it. Come on. Do yeah, it. Yeah, I know. that We've been talking and about that in my show, too. It's like, come on. Just lift, fucking do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. just, 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 just rip it. Just, just do yeah, it. Like yeah, like a band-aid. Like right. a band-aid. Just do every it. Time this, every time this happens, we see them do nothing. I mean, all they're doing is showing Uber how strong they are. That's it, in my opinion. Until you actually do something, you're not doing anything. Well, because, I mean, but I mean, you're actually making more of a problem because you're proving to these companies, hey, we'll leave. Okay, well, then we'll move it to July 1st. Oh, cool. We'll leave on the on July 1st then. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's all that changed with Uber. They just said, well, then we'll just leave on July 1st. Sweet. If you want to push it back after that, then we'll leave on the next. Well, day. I assuming they're pushing it back so they can have more conversations and someone can pay them, I'm sure. Right. But Lyft came in with that offer last week and offered them half as much as they were asking for. And they didn't. They said, we're not negotiating. This well, is where I mean, it gets a little weird to me. Like, why did you say that? Why did you say we're not negotiating? And yet now everybody's getting involved and saying, we need to push this back. Well, why? Because, you know, it's not going to work. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of articles out too saying, finally saying what we've talked about. You know, go check when Austin when when Austin lost Uber and Lyft, and I didn't, I forgot that it was for an entire year. Oh, is that how long it was? A year? Wow. Yeah, it was a year, man. But it's like so the boy who time. cried, right? So yeah, we're gonna pull out. Yeah, we're gonna pull out. Yeah, we're gonna pull out. Yeah, we're gonna like until like it actually happens. So like, you're yeah, okay. We'll just keep pushing it back until you figure it out. But see, that's where I get a little concerned. What are they even fighting for? Lyft offered them half as much. And they said, we're not negotiating. This is a city council measure and it's passed. Okay, well, if you're not negotiating, what, what's going on? Because they've said they'll leave. At this point, they have to leave if it's just going to be that amount or nothing. Otherwise, every city is going to say, we want that amount too. Yeah, we'll have to see. Back. I, I hate that I have to wait till July now. Damn it. <laughs> and then, but Jason, then you'll have to wait till August. So yeah, exactly. Or, or I'll October. be, I'll so be here and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, don't, don't be waiting, people. I, You know, anybody in, in Minneapolis can shout out on this one. If Gagan's still in here, I know he's got something to say, but he doesn't do the ride share too much. So, um, but anybody else, you know, if you have something to say, please leave in any of our How comments. How do you do ride share? Y'all bunch of bitches. <laughs> Well, we all we all live in crazy towns now, man. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, I would never. <laughs> it's fun. You get people I love, are trying I love to eat nachos share. in your car at five thirty in the morning. Oh, like, man. I always loved ride share, man. I think it's fun too. You get burned yeah. out. You get. I can only take in little bits, but. No, thank you. Yeah, but I, but you but you did it this weekend or yep. didn't you last weekend just to I get did. the bonus? Yeah, I did forty one rides. Of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I mean that's Ugh. that's why you do it. Kim's forty one rides. Like, like, strangers. Kim's like forty strangers. Ten hours. I don't want to talk to strangers. But <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't want to talk to people strangers. going to restaurants. <laughs> I mean, I don't want them in my car. It can be fun and can be 
strange at the same time. Like what <laughs> it can be back to back rides of like, this was the best ride I ever had. And then you can have somebody that you think they're going to shank you in the neck while you're driving them to the next stop. See? So. Really? See? Exactly. It's, it's like, go. it's like the text I sent Kim. It's questionable. Oh, <laughs> I'm telling you, I was like this and I'm, I'm trying to drive and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, uh, that's 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 our time for tonight. I, we had other subjects too, but again, go join Dashing Grandpa because one of the ones we were going to get into is Spark. I know he's probably talking. I just saw that he was went live a few minutes ago or something. So go check that out because I know that's his. I saw it on his thumbnail, and I'd been talking to him this week. That's his topic for tonight. Um, but thank you all for joining us. Um, you know, be smart or be safe. Earn smart and uh, don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> or don't share one. Ha ha ha!